Aloha. Well, back to gardening videos. Weather's beautiful. It's beautiful. Although it's cold here in Hawaii. It was 39 degrees in Volcano last night and there's snow on Mauna Kea. Anywho, uh, it's the time of year where I'm going to be doing a little bit of fruit tree grafting. I've had um, a lot of questions uh, over the time and some lately about propagating fruit trees from cuttings and unfortunately there aren't too many fruit trees that actually propagate well from cuttings. Uh, this is not easy to do with most fruit trees. Now with vines, this is true, it's very simple. Grapes, passion vines and so on, they propagate really well. A lot of our ornamentals uh, and perennials and such all propagate very well from cuttings, but when it comes to fruit trees, not too many. Figs, pomegranates, figs and pomegranates are pretty good. Um, some varieties of plum and pluot also propagate from cutting. Generally speaking, things like cherries, persimmons, uh, sapote, you know, and so on, this is all pretty impossible. You have to graft the plants. So you need a piece of rootstock, and then you need a scion, and you've got to put the two together in order to make a tree, because most of them refuse to root uh, when you try to strike them for a cutting. So, today we're going to go ahead and talk about two basic types of grafts used to create a fruit tree. The first one, the whip graft, is the simplest. This is the easiest one to use. Uh, the second one, a little bit harder, uh, is a side approach wedge graft. That's also used in creating fruit trees. Well, some of the basic things that you're going to need if you want to graft some fruit trees, the first thing you're going to need is some rootstock. And so, there are many ways you can acquire rootstock. You can buy it, you can grow it, you can harvest it. It depends. Uh, it's just it, it's 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 rather broad. Uh, a lot of fruit trees will grow on a, a seedling rootstock. So, for instance, if you want to grow an apple tree, but you want a golden delicious or a Fuji or something like this, well, you can take a pit out of, say, a golden delicious apple and plant it in a pot, it's going to grow into an apple tree. Chances are that tree won't probably make very good apples from a seed, but at a point in time you can remove the top of that tree and replace it with a piece of Fuji or whatever else it is that you want to grow on there and use the seedling as the roots for the, for the apple tree. The same goes with sapote and so many other different plants. Citrus, for instance. You can use citrus seedlings. Now, they're not all compatible, and a lot of times when you get one kind of plant and you're grafting it to another kind of plant, then you end up with odd reactions. This is why we refer to some trees as being dwarf, or semi-dwarf, or ultra dwarf or standard all that really depends on the compatibility between what's under the ground and what you put on top and so you know like if you use a mauling rootstock on an apple you know you, you uh, end up with a dwarfed tree and all kinds of different rootstocks that are used with citrus a lot of times to get a dwarf citrus tree a dwarf orange you'd use trifoliate orange as a rootstock which is a deciduous orange with three leaves, that's what they call a trifoliate, nasty big old spines and lousy fruit, but it makes great rootstock, it's very rot resistant, it takes cold soil as well, and uh, it's, it also will keep the trees compact. Now, in my case here, I'm working mostly with seedlings, uh, so if I'm growing citrus trees, I do have some trifoliate cuttings going here to use as rootstock, but I've also planted Eureka lemon seeds, and I'm using lemon rootstock. Um, that, that causes generally fairly big citrus trees. They're not going to be little guys. But around here that works for us. We tend to find that the, uh, uh, the larger, faster growing, bigger type rootstocks tend to anchor in the soil around here a whole lot better. And so sometimes the uh, dwarf rootstocks don't work under marginal conditions well. They don't anchor as well. They don't feed as well. Anyway, blah, 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 right? Um, in the case of, say, uh, a lot of your fruit trees, if you've got some apples or some pears or something out there in the orchard already, you may have noticed that you get suckers off the rootstock. Well, one way to get a rootstock to make a new 
apple tree is to go down and remove some of the sucker roots and all. Take it out, you know, pot it, get it growing, get it rooted in real nice, and when it's big enough to handle, cut the head off, stick on whatever you want to do. So you can harvest rootstock from your own trees, and in that case you can get specialized rootstocks that were used for dwarfing. Um, you know, I have the trifoliate orange rootstock that I have here in the nursery all came off of one tree that I bought that refused to stop sending out suckers from the rootstock off the sides of the trunk. Uh, and so I harvested them all and I rooted them. The, the trifoliate does root uh, from cuttings, uh, whereas the uh, satsuma that I'm going to put on the top doesn't root from cuttings hardly at all. Now, citrus things are variable. Some citrus root from a cutting, some citrus do not. In general, it's not the easiest thing to do. Meyer lemon is a tendency to root so easily from a cutting that we seldom graft the tree. Um, the Tahitian limes, Tahitian limes, Mexican limes also have a tendency to root pretty well from cuttings. I have several trees in the nursery of lime that were rooted from cutting branches from my tree. But it's usually easier to do the grafting. So let's have a look at this here. Right here I have a uh, rootstock sucker from an apple tree that I had in the field. I pulled it out, I potted it. Over here I have used a simple whip graft to put dorset golden on the top of this sucker. Over here I've used a side approach wedge graft so that I could stick a piece of wood right into the side of the trunk. Over here we were sticking the scion or the bit of apple tree wood onto a branch that I had cut off and then spliced it in place. Here there was no branch, just a notch made into the trunk uh, and then the science inserted. Over here we've got a piece of Fuji apple which is again a whip graft stuck on a side branch stub. So this guy right over here is Owari Satsuma mandarin that has been put onto a Eureka lemon seedling rootstock and it's been done by a side approach wedge graft. This is the Owari over here and it's pushed into the side of the trunk of the lemon seedling and in this case we have left a lemon nurse branch. It means I left part of the lemon tree intact with the leaves on it. Um, hopefully the photosynthesis from that lemon will help create a better healing and take on the Owari Satsuma. It's an experiment. It's used sometimes uh, what they call nurse branches. I know if you're grafting tropical guavas you're going to need one. That's about the only way you can get them to take. So right over there I've got two Eureka lemon seedlings in pots ready to go. Laying on the counter underneath them I have cyan wood for Owari Satsuma mandarin. Now right over here I have some rubber bands. Now this is a large cash bundling type that I'm going to use to bind the cyans to the stock. Right here I have an excellent Japanese grafting knife. Um, grafting knives are specific and generally speaking a regular old kitchen knife or a pocket knife will not do the job. It needs to be surgically sharp and it generally is only sharpened on one edge like a plane and so grafting knife is a special type of a knife. There are some that have double edges. I've seen the Victorian Ox knife has two edges and I, by the way I don't like them. The ones with the single edges work better. <coughs> Over here you're going to need a pair of pruning shears and then you're also going to need some kind of a sealer to coat everything with and an applicator sitting right here. First thing first, here's my Satsuma Cyan, and so I, the easiest way to do a whip graft, which is what I'm going to work on first here, is to find a piece of rootstock and a piece of Cyan wood that are about the same diameter, which is what we have here, and then figure out where you're going to cut your rootstock so that they come out about the same size. You can do a whip graft uh, otherwise, but it's not nearly as easy. So getting them so they match up all the way around so it's the same diameter really is the easiest way to go. And that's what I'm going for here. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at the scion and I'm going to repair it for the job. First thing is I do not require any leaves right down here because I've got to cut this area. So I'm taking off all the leaves, three sets, at the bottom of the scion. 
Then I'm coming up the scion and I'm going to take the leaves and I'm going to reduce them down to just a minimum here. Um, too much leaf and this will probably not take. And so I'm taking off some of the leaves from the scion um, and then decide how long to make it and I believe in this case we're going to make a scion that's this big. That would work fine. It's got one, two, three, four sets of leaves that I've shortened back over here. Uh, Alright, now the next thing is then looking in here and eyeing it up. Looks like I have uh, at least one extra leaf right here in my way. So I'm going to take those off. Now, this thing's going to have to get cut. And you don't want to cut yourself. These things are really, really sharp. Okay, And if it isn't sharp, it's not going to do the job. So you need to sharpen it ahead of time. I have sharpened this and I could shave with it, but I never shave, so we won't do that. All right, so then always work it, it, whenever possible with the knife away from you. I'm going to lay the knife here on the side of the lemon tree trunk, and then I'm going to hang on to the trunk with the other hand so I don't crack anything, and then I'm just going to push the knife upwards towards the top of the plant. All right, that cut the top off, but it cut it off short. There we go. I want a nice, long, sloping cut like this one here. See that? You can see the cut right there. All right, so we have a nice long sloping angle. Now I'm going to take my scion and I'm going to create another nice long sloping angle on this that's approximately the same length. Sometimes I don't get it the first time around. That looks pretty good, although I got a little tab of bark there. All right, so now we're going to size it up. All right, well, one of the things that can happen when you do this, and it happened to me here, my cut curved, okay, because the wood was hard. So I'm going to try this one more time and see if I can get a flatter cut. Ah, yes, there we go. There we have a nice flat cut. And it's just about the same as the one on the sign on the stock here. Yes, sir, Bob. Mm-hmm. Well, they match up real nice. Yeah, that's a beauty. Okay, so we got our cuts made. Two long sloping angles that oppose each other. The next thing, I need something to bind it with. Oh, so, here I'm using the fairly large size cash bundling type rubber bands. If you're bundling up bills and stuff, these to work good. You can get them right at the drugstore or the stationery store, or whatever. Cut the strip in two. You can use all sorts of different things. People use raffia. They use beeswax. I mean, I don't, whew, string. Uh, okay, I like rubber. And I like rubber because it's elastic. And it's much easier to work with than a lot of other materials. It's also cheap, readily available as rubber bands. Right, so, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm place the scion onto the stock, lining up the cambriums and getting everything just about in the right place. Next thing, I'm going to take the rubber band here and put it under my thumb, and I'm going to wrap the rubber band around itself down on the rootstock end. There we go. And check things here to make sure it's good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. We're nice. We're lined up nice. There you go. So now you want to make sure that it's it's tight, nice, real nice and tight, uh, with the rubber band wrapped around itself down on the rootstock. Then you wrap upwards, pulling the band really tight and hard. The reason we're pulling it so hard is because I want to make sure that we pull the two pieces of wood into intimate contact with each other. Okay. Now that I've made it all the way up and I've bound the entire scion onto the rootstock, now I'm wrapping my way back down again with the rubber. So we end up down here on the rootstock, okay? Then I'm going to take the rubber band, make a loop around the trunk, hold it with my finger, 
take the loose end, pull it through, and then pull everything back upwards towards the top. There you go. Tying a knot with the rubber band into itself. Very cool, huh? See? Our orange tree is now fastened to the top of the rootstock with that rubber band. Okay, so that is what we call a whip graft. It's the simplest way to do a graft on a fruit tree. Um, for most things, it works pretty well. They also heal really well and really fast. Oftentimes, you can't even tell in a year that that where that cut was made, except that there's a difference in color because it will heal perfectly if you did it well. All right, next, I want to try to do a side approach wedge graft on this one. To do that, we do need a trunk that's pretty substantial because I have to split this trunk, see, and spread it apart so I can insert the scion. So, first off, to find a good piece of Owari Satsuma here, it's very important with grafting, just like with cuttings, that you know what end is up. This is the tip of the branch you do not want to insert it with the tip going towards the root. You want it back on the tree the same way it came off, root end down. I'm going to say the end of this cutting is right there. Cut it off. All right, next thing, shorten the leaves. Too much leaf, they just will fall off and the whole thing probably won't take. We want it to leaf back out on the side of the trunk now. All right, so here I have my cutting prepared in that regard. Then. If we're going to make a side approach wedge, we need to create a wedge on the bottom right here. All right. And so I take my knife, lay it on the side of the scion right there, and push to the end. There we go. Then turn it over, and exactly opposite, I'm going to make an opposite exact same cut. Okay, so what we end up with is that little pointed wedge right there. See, it's actually cut on both sides and it's cut to a point. All right, next thing, pick a nice substantial spot on the side of this tree trunk right here and grab it from above because I don't want to be below my knife when I do this. And I'm going to take the knife begin to insert it into the trunk then I'm going to turn it and start heading downward slowly if you do this too fast you're going to cut right through everything there we go okay, now there you see we have cut a notch into the side of the trunk right there okay next thing I'm going to do take my scion I'm going to spread the notch and I'm going to push my wedge in there like that. Okay, let's make sure it's in all the way nice and tight. Yep, yeah, looks good. Okay, so here you can see what I've done. It's been wedged into the side of the lemon tree. Next. another rubber band. Start right here. Again, starting on the rootstock end. Because the rootstock end is stable and you want to make sure that you got your rubber bound around itself. You wrap one right wrap of rubber band around the rubber band onto the tree trunk. And that's why I like rubber because it bites to itself. Then, as we start to approach the wedge, we can begin to pull really tight because it never fits exactly right. I ain't the best at cutting this stuff and so if you pull the rubber tight enough the rubber will pull the two pieces of wood into intimate contact as it goes up. Okay, so I'm really pulling on this thing. This is really wrapped tight. Okay, there we go. Now we've made it to the top of the cut. Now pull a little more. There we go. Now I'm going back down I'm going to leave myself enough of this band so I can tie it. So I'm coming all the way back to where I started. So I'm double wrapping the original place where I wrapped the rubber band over itself just to make sure 
and it ain't going anywhere. Then make a loop, stick the loose end through the loop, and pull upward just like we did with the other one. There we go. Beautiful, huh? What do you think? Isn't that cool? Alright, now I'm going to cut the loose ends off. They don't help anything. They make it a little harder to seal anyway. There we go. Loose ends over here. We have a loose end on the other one. Right there. There we go. Okay, now the lemon tree is just as a nurse. That's all. The only reason I left this lemon shoe down is just to get some energy going for the uh, for the uh, Owari Satsuma. And so I'm going to take the lemon and I'm going to prune it back right about here. There we go. So I have left um, one, two, three, four, five, six entire leaves uh, on the lemon tree. The Owari Satsuma is on this side, the lemon's on that side. I don't have to shorten the leaves on the lemon because it's still hooked to its own roots and so it hasn't noticed that much has happened over here. Uh, that little splice I put in the side isn't going to affect too much. Alright, the next thing we have to do then is we must seal the grafts because if air gets to them, mm -mm -mm, ain't going to work. Now, okay, you're all going to ask me about the knife I'm using, so I'm just going to put it in the camera <laughs> because everything on it is in Japanese. I can't read it, and so. Uh, much I can tell you about it, except it's made in Japan, it's got a hardwood handle, the blade is made by a similar process to a samurai sword, where it's been layered, beaten, heated, bent, heated, layered, beaten, so it's got numerous layers, laminated type blade, it makes it very, very stiff, okay, and then on this side here, there are some characters, if you happen to read Japanese, maybe you can tell something from that. I don't know. Anyway, it's a heck of a cute knife, and if it wasn't so handy for grafting, I think I'd carry this thing around as a pocket knife. I like it. Anyway, so there's the knife. Um, I bought mine originally from Peaceful Valley Farm Supply, Grass Valley. I think they call it Go Organic on the web. So you can look there. I think they're still available there. I wouldn't doubt you could find this too on Amazon. I'm pretty sure if you type in Japanese grafting knife that this will probably come up. It's my favorite. I've got some European ones. I've got a Swiss one uh, by Victorinox. Eh, I don't know. It's better for budding. That one has got a bud hook on it. Uh, we're not talking budding today though. There's the knife. Pruning shears, of course, I'm sure most of you have seen a pair of these. Uh, I prefer Baco. I think Baco is one of the best on the market. So that's what we got there. Now, the next thing to talk about is sealers. All right, And there are a variety of different sealers you can use. Um, yeah, that's still legible, isn't it? This is Doc Farwell's grafting sealer. Again, I believe this came from Peaceful Valley Farm Supply. Um, mostly this is tough as Elmer's glue. Uh, there's a yellow color in there, for sure, and there may be a few other things in the formula. I don't know exactly what's in there, but I do know that most of it really is casein, Elmer's glue. Here I have my bucket of grafting sealer, and I have one of my plant name tags, uh, which works fine for me. Plastic table knife's a good thing. This stuff's messy, and so you don't want to use something valuable. All right, so now I am more or less painting this junk on here, and since we're bench grafting, that is, I'm working from little plants in flower pots on the workbench here, um, instead of out in the field, I am uh, holding this stuff over the jar because it gets messy, it can drip, and I like to get a good coat of it to make sure there is no air getting through the rubber band uh, air is your enemy when it comes to grafting. You want to make sure that this is sealed and it's airtight. So it's kind of bandaging a wound here, but with plants, one thing that goes wrong is if they dry out, they don't take. Okay, that looks pretty good. There we go. I have painted the entire thing. There's the whip graft. Now here I have the side approach wedge, and I want to make sure that I get grafting sealer 
in the crotch between where the two pieces come together because uh, that has to be sealed also so air does not sneak in there. And kind of laying this stuff on here and letting it drip down uh, that way it's coating better. Oh yes, looking good. Here we go. So, there. All coated. Looking good. Important point is that the green layer of the cambium lines up. If the cambium doesn't line up and touch, then they can't grow together. Now, there will be some growing outward from both ends that will meet, and so places where they didn't touch, they will often make contact eventually, but you need to have some of it in contact at first to make a good union, so that's important. Um, again, you know, you need something to use as a rootstock, so whatever it is you're planning to, to grow if you want to make trees, you know, the easiest way is just get a handful of seeds if you want to graft cherimoyas. Plant a bunch of cherimoya seeds. When you get trees big enough to work with, then take your name varieties, your El Bumpos and all the Booths and all the others, and, and, and graft them into the top of the seedlings. Um, you know, as I suggested earlier, you can go through your orchard if you have rootstock suckers, and you can pull the rootstock suckers out, roots and all, or dig them out. You can pot those and use them as quality rootstock. That works good, too. Hey, you got any more questions about it, go ahead You know, get a hold of me. We'll be talking more about grafting. I'm going to be doing some in the next few weeks. So, aloha. Don't let your grafts hang loose. You want them nice and tight. And happy garden. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Mehe Kalikimaka.